Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salam wa rasulillah, ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa ala thamma ma ba'a to proceed. So inshallah we will uh, go over Bab Diyat al-Jirah, uh, the chapter on indemnities for wounds. And then if we can finish uh, Shijaj as well, that's facial wounds, uh, that's face and head. Bab Diyat al-Jirah, chapter on indemnities for wounds. Imam Qadam rahimahullah said, كل ما في الإنسان منه شيء واحد ففيه ذية كلسانه وأنفه وذكره وسمعه وبصره وشمه وعقله وكلامه وبطشه ومشيه وكذلك في كل واحد من سعره وهو أن يجعل وجهه في جانبه وتسويد وجهه وخديه واستطلاق بوله أو غائطه وقرع رأسه ولحيته ذية so the mutilation of anything of which there is one part or faculty in the human body makes a complete indemnity binding. This includes the mutilation of or dismemberment of one's tongue, nose, penis, hearing, eyesight, sense of smell, intellect, speech, ability to strike, and ability to walk. Likewise is the case for twisting his face to one side, like this, uh, blackening it or his cheeks, that is changing the color of his face to a different color, causing him urinary or fecal incontinence, or causing hairlessness of his head or beard. Hairlessness of his head or beard. It applies to four different types of hair, scalp, uh, the hair on the scalp, the hair on the jaws, that's the beard, the eyebrows, and the eyelashes. Uh, of course, the eyelashes, you, all, you have how many of them? Four. Upper eyelid, lower eyelid, right, left, four. 25 for each. You, you, you remove the eyelashes on the lower eyelid alone, 25, 25, 25, 25. Okay? Eyebrows, 50, 50. We're using the male, sorry, the Muslim male. 50, 50. This, uh, 100. The beard, 100. Uh, the diyat are based on Kitab Amr ibn Hazm. The Prophet's uh, basically message to Amr ibn Hazm and Qada al Sahaba. Kitab Amr ibn Hazm is controversial, whether it is traceable to the Prophet وسلم, or not. However, to use it as a basis for the law would make sense because some consider it traceable to the Prophet Sallallahu and it was used as a basis for the law. So to use it as a basis for the law would make sense. To have yaqeen that the Prophet wrote this book even though the authenticity is controversial, we are saying that there is no yaqeen that the authentic ones are traceable to the Prophet Sallallahu unless they are mutawatir, in the sense of yaqeen, definitive transmission. The disagreement, and there is no disagreement between the scholars except about the hadith that are muttafaq alayha, agreed upon b b b b between Bukhari and Muslim, where some scholars, a minority of scholars, said that they induce yaqeen or certainty, and the majority of usulis said they do not induce yaqeen or certainty. No singular reports that are reported by a small number of people in each layer of the chain will have uh, the power of inducing yaqeen. It's only mutawatir, things that have the same strength of transmission like the Quran. But 
Kitab Amr ibn Hazm is controversial. There, is, there are many scholars who accepted it, and it would be a good basis for uh, the laws in terms of the diyat without considering it definitive, final, uh, in, 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 in transmission. Then the Sheikh said, وَمَا فِيهِ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا فَفِيهِ مَدِّيَّ وَفِي أَحَدِهِ مَا نَصْفُهَا كَالْعَيْنَيْنِ وَالْحَاجِبَيْنِ وَالشَّفَتَيْنِ وَالْأُذُنَيْنِ وَالْلَّحْيَيْنِ وَالْيَدَيْنِ وَالثَّدْيَيْنِ وَالْأَلِيَتَيْنِ وَالْأُنْثَيَيْنِ وَالْإِسْكَتَيْنِ أَوْ الْأَسْكَتَيْنِ وَالْرِجْلَيْنِ As for paired organs or parts, a complete indemnity is binding for the mutilation of both organs or parts. Mutilating one of them makes one half of a complete indemnity binding, such as one of the eyes, eyebrows, lips, ears, jaw bones, hands, breasts, buttocks, testicles, labia majora, or legs. Anything that, you know, that comes in a pair, uh, there will be half uh, of the day uh, for the dismemberment or the mutilation. Uh, let me see if he talks about it uh, later. Maybe he will talk about it later. So we'll come to it later. So uh, uh, basically, whatever it is that you have, one, like, it, then the, there is complete daya four. Two, then each one will be half the daya. Four eyelids, each one will have quarter of the daya, and, and so on. Easy. وفي الأجفان الأربعة الدية وفي أهدابها الدية وفي كل واحد ربعها فإن قلعها بأهدابها وجب الدية واحدة. A complete indemnity is binding for mutilating the four eyelids, and it will also be binding for their eyelashes. For each one is one quarter of a complete indemnity. If he removes them along with their eyelashes, only one complete indemnity is binding. So, okay, so the, the, uh, so the eyelid and the eyelashes. So if he removes the whole thing, it's 25. If he only removes the eyelashes, it's still 25. Uh, because the, and, and also, you learn some things from, uh, from the diyat as well, and maqadir diyat, and the value of the diyat, which is the importance of aesthetics in Islam. Uh, so, uh, you, you know, the, the, the sort of the, the three levels of aesthetics, ethics, and spirituality, and how people need to ascend in this order. And people need, like people who have uh, a taste for aesthetics, they will also have a taste for ethics. And people who have a taste for ethics, they will not be fulfilled until they have a taste for um, spirituality and connecting with the transcendent, the divine, and so on. So it's three different levels. But there is, a, you know, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا جَمَالٌ حِينَ تُرِيحُونَ وَحِينَ تَسْرَحُونَ وَتَحْمِلُ أَثْقَالَكُمْ إِلَى بَلَدٍ لَمْ تَكُنُوا بَلَغِيهِ إِلَى بِشِقِّ الْأَنفُسِ So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned his favors in creating al-khayr wal-bighal wal-hamir, he talked about the beauty also. So it alert us, to point us to that concept, aesthetics. It's not only about the utility of horses. Look at how beautiful they are and enjoy that beauty. Uh, that's what the ayah is trying to say. The same applies here. When you remove one eyebrow, 50 uh, camels. When you uh, cut off four fingers, 40 camels. When you break my, break not cut off. When you break my zend, that is breaking uh, this, uh, what is it? Two camels. When you break my tarqua, one camel. 
when you break my dollar, one camel, two dollars, two ribs, two, uh, that's the clavicle, tarqwa is the clavicle, dollar is the rib, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so on. Uh, but when you uh, basically cause the hair to go away off my one eyebrow, 50 camels. So that is, why? Because of the, that concept, you know, the jamal, the beauty. It is important for people, like it is a disfigurement of the face. Yeah, disambiguation, I just, because I, disambiguation, go ahead. If it is to, to it is, as far as the eyebrow, is it to cause it to never return again, or is it possible? To cause it to never return again. Okay. To cause it to never return again. Yes. No, breaking is different from amputation. You break my arm, the amputation will be 50. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Amputation is 50. Yeah. Because I have two hands. You, you, yeah. So the breaking, breaking the wrist, then, when you talk about breaking the wrist, they are not disappearing. Breaking the wrist, they are not, yeah, it is not disappearing. But you broke my two bones, each bone, the ulna and the fibula, each bone is one camel. Uh, then the Sheikh said, وَفِي أَصَابِعِ الْيَدَيْنِ الدِّيَّةِ وَفِي أَصَابِعِ الرِّجْلَيْنِ الدِّيَّةِ وَفِي كُلِّ إِصْبَعٍ عُشْرُهَا وَفِي كُلِّ أُنْمُولَةٍ ثُلُثُ عَقْلِهَا إِلَّا الْإِبْهَامَ فِي كُلِّ أُنْمُولَةٍ نِصْفُ عَقْلِهَا There is a binding complete indemnity for mutilating the fingers of both hands or the toes of both feet. For mutilating each finger or toe, there is one-tenth of the complete indemnity, 10 camels for a male Muslim or a Muslim male. For each phalanx is one-third of the indemnity of the finger, except that for each phalanx of the thumb, there is one-half of the indemnity of the finger. It, it's straightforward. You know, 10, you know, one hand is 50. Five fingers is 50. Keep in mind, you cut off my five fingers, that's 50. You cut off my hand, that is 50. You cut off my uh, forearm, that is 50. You cut off my arm, that is 50. So if you have to do something, <laughs> it's all 50. It's all 50. But keep in mind, if you do it intentionally, I get to cut off from here as well because I don't have to accept the indemnity. So if you do it intentionally, and you cut off from here, I get to cut off from here. Equal retribution. Okay. Then the sheikh said, uh, okay, so 50, each finger is 10 camels. 10 camels was sizable, really sizable uh, uh, compensation. Uh, 10 camels, so then each one is 3.3, so three camels and the value of one third of a camel. So for each unmula, phalanx, because there are three phalanxes in your finger, for each one there is three, uh, three, uh, uh, one third of the 10, so 3.3333. And then, except the thumb. The thumb has how many? Two. Two. So five and five. Five and five. Uh, then the sheikh said, وَفِي كُلِّ سِنٍ خَمْسٌ مِنَ الْإِبِلِ إِذَا لَمْ تَعُدْ For every tooth that does not re-erupt, there is an indemnity of five camels. Every tooth that does not re-erupt, there is an indemnity of five camels. How many? 32. Total, 160 camels for your teeth. 100 if I kill you. 160 if I remove all of your teeth. Uh, keep in mind that Omar radiallahu anhu qada bi arba' diyat fi rajul darab rajulan fa adhaba sam'ahu wa basarahu wa aqlahu 
uh, or something like this, that, that he basically struck him in the face and he caused his hearing, his eyesight, his like smell or, uh, and his intellect to go. Uh, damaged all of that. So Omar radiallahu anhu uh, basically uh, adjudicated this case and uh, gave the victim four diyat, that is 400 camels. That's, you know, you become a king like this. Um, Okay, so then, وَفِي مَارِنِ الْأَنْفِ وَحَلَمَةِ الثَّدْيِ وَالْكَفْ وَالْقَدَمْ وَحَشَفَةِ الذَّكَرْ وَمَا ظَهَرَ مِنَ السِّنِّ وَتَسْوِيدِهَا دِيَةُ الْعُضْوِ كُلِّهِ وَفِي بَعْضِ ذَلِكَ بِالْحِسَابِ مِنْ دِيَتِهِ For the mutilation of the soft tip of the nose, the nipple of the breast, the hand or foot, the glance penis, which is the tip of the penis, or the erupted part of the tooth, or blackening it, the tooth. A full indemnity of the organ will be binding. For mutilating a portion of them, the corresponding indemnity will be binding. Why? Because they said that a breast without the nipple is like no breast, you know. Uh, they say that what matters in the nose is the soft part, the cartilaginous part of the nose. Keep in mind, if you cut off the cart cartilaginous part intentionally, not mistakenly, intentionally, equal retribution could be administered. If, if you break my nose from here, or you cut off my nose from here, no equal retribution. It will only be the indemnity, because we have talked about this before. Why? We cannot guarantee non-transgression, ta'addi, in the execution of equal retribution. And I told you with the surgical precision nowadays, there, I mean, if people are flexible enough and they don't have to read from the Mu'tamad all the time, then they could expand that. Uh, then it says here, uh, what else? Glance, uh, the glance penis or the erupted part of the tooth or blackening it, a full indemnity of the organ will be binding. For mutilating a portion of them, the corresponding indemnity will be binding. So they have the mutilating a portion of them, uh, the corresponding indemnity will be binding. Like half of it, for instance, then half of the indemnity will be binding. They talk about like a, a weird scenario where someone cuts off half of the penis longitudinally. I don't know how to do it or how, and then like how they figure that out. It's like, a, uh, but sometimes they hypothesize even without there be a, being a practical precedent, they just hypothesize uh, that it would be half, if, if, if someone cuts off the glance penis, that's the tip of the penis, that is the full indemnity, uh, because that is like, like cutting off the whole thing. But if someone cuts, it, cuts, it, uh, cuts off half of it uh, along the long axis, uh, then it is half of the indemnity, except if the remaining half will not be usable in terms of holding the urine and the erection. So two functions for that organ. Uh, if you lose the function, the full indemnity will be, uh, will, will, will be prescribed. But if you do not lose either function, and you cut off half of it along the long axis, they said that half of the indemnity is prescribed. Uh, but I, I've never heard of, this, uh, of any practical precedent here. Uh, but, but also the amount of detail and the, 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 the pursuit of equity, the pursuit of justice. Uh, they were almost obsessed with the pursuit of justice. How do we be, how do we do it justly? How do we figure this out, you know, equitably? Is that, is that concern? And that is what we need to learn from them, not the exact sort of applications uh, that 
they themselves disagreed over all the time. وفي الأشل من اليد وال أوكي وفي الأشل من اليد والرجل والذكر وذكر الخصي والعنين ولسان الأخرس والعين القائمة والسن السوداء والذكر دون حشفته والثدي دون حلمته والأنف دون أرنبته والزائد من الأصابع وغيرها حكومة. Okay, for mutilating the paralytic hand, paralyzed hand, leg or penis, the penis of the castrated. Or impotent, the tongue of the mute, uh, the tongue of the mute, the blind eye, the black tooth, the penis whose glance is missing, the breast whose nipple is missing, the nose whose tip is missing, or the extra digit. The compensation will be determined by the authorities. Hukuma. Fiha hukuma. Hukuma means adjudicated by the authorities. How did they do it? They said, if you have a slave of the same gender and the same thing happened to them, how much does his value diminish? If it diminishes by 10%, then it's 10 it is, that, that's the hukuma in this case. Then it's 10% of the day. So, that's how they figured the hukum out. Well, nowadays, we'll, we'll have to find a way to figure it out. Uh, but then, so they said all of this. Keep in mind, just keep in mind the principle. So they say, if there is a, the, the penis of the impotent, you cut it off, there is no dea. But keep in mind that, that there is a principle here. If that penis of the impotent was holding the urine, and now the person cannot hold the urine, he lost the function. He lost a faculty, he lost the function. He is entitled to the day. Because the hukuma will never reach the day of the organ. It will be always less than the day of the organ. The hukuma of any organ will be always less than the day of uh, the organ. Sometimes the hukuma could be more but that is, that is not when you cut part. Like if, I, if you break someone's rib and it goes back, it heals well. What is the idea? One camel. If you break someone's rib and it becomes bent or it protrudes, you know, it doesn't heal well, it doesn't heal straight. What happens? Hukuma. Could the hukuma in this case be more? Yes. In this case, it could be more. But let us say you uh, basically cut off someone's, uh, cut off something that cannot be measurable of an organ that is hard to measure of any organ. That hukuma will never be equal to the day of the whole organ, because it doesn't make sense uh, in this case. Then the Sheikh said, وَفِي الْأَشَلِّ مِنَ الْأُذُنْ وَالْأَنْفِ الْأَخْشَمْ وَأُذُنْ الْأَصَمْ دِيَتُهَا كَامِلَةً As for the paralytic ear, the nose of one who has no sense of smell, or the ear of the deaf, the entire indemnity of the organ will be binding. What is the difference between this and the previous examples? They provide Exactly, beauty, aesthetic advantage. The, like, you cut off my nose, okay, I, you know, it didn't affect, I did not have uh, the sense of smell. You cut off my nose, still, man, this is quite uh, devastating. Uh, or my ear, and I did not hear out of this ear, but I just wanted my ear, because it, you know, looks good uh, to have two. So the, if you cut off one, then that's the day kamila. Okay. Versus, versus al ashal min al yad. Al ashal min al yad. You know, so you cut off my paralyzed hand. There is beauty in having two hands, but it is not. The hand is mainly not for beauty. It is mainly for utility. 
versus the face and the, organ, the, the different parts of the face, the, the, the utility, the, the beauty is the focus here more than the utility. So if you cut off my paralyzed hand, there is no dia, is hukuma, compensation to be determined less than the dia, less than uh, the dia. Uh, but people can, can always uh, dispute over things, but I told you, like, you know, uh, the, we will have to keep in mind that if, if I lose a function, I'm entitled to the whole day. Now, quickly, let's go over Shijaj because it should not be a big deal. Bab Shijaj wa ghayriha, chapter on head and face injuries and others, facial injuries. As Shijaj hiya juruhu rasi wal waj, wa hiya tisa, ashr, not tisa, in the madhab. There is an additional one, Damiga will come after in Ma'muma. There is number 10, and it is in your commentary. So, Shijaj hiya juruh al rasi wal wajh wa hiya tisa. Shijaj are the head and face injuries. These are nine, arranged in order of their depth. Awaluha al harisa, alati tashukku al jilda, shakkan la yazharu minhu dam. Al harisa, which disrupts the skin without. The, without causing any bleeding. That is a superficial abrasion in the epidermis, like a very superficial abrasion that would not ca cause any bleeding. And it does not matter how big it is. So, you know, no, it's here. We're talking here. So, uh, okay, it doesn't matter the length of it. However, if it crosses from the scalp to between the head and the face, if it crosses, it's two. You see that line? If it crosses that line, it's two. If it is in the, uh, on the face or on the scalp and not crossing the hairline, it's one. If it crosses the hairline here between the head and the kafa or the nape, what is it? Two or one? Two. No. It is one because there is no dia for dia for the, the wounds except the the face and the, the head. So it is one and hukuma for this, compensation for this to be determined. Compensate hukuma, you know, compensation to be determined for the cut here. But if it crosses here between the head and the face, it is two. Okay. So, ثم البازلة التي ينزل منها دم يسير البازلة which causes slight bleeding. ثم البادعة التي تبضع اللحم بعد الجلد. Number three, البادعة which exposes the flesh underneath the skin. ثم السمحاق التي بينها وبين العظم قشرة رقيقة. Then. Okay, no, no, no. ثم ثم المتلاحمة التي أخذت في اللحم. Then al mutalahima which cuts through the flesh, which cuts through the flesh. Thumma al-simhaq, alati bainaha bain al-azma qishratun raqiqa. Then a simhaq which separates from the bone by a fine membrane, periosteum. So if it reaches the periosteum, which is the, the, the fine covering of the bone, uh, that's the simhaq. These are how many? Five. Is there any dia muqata for this? The designated dia for any of these? No. فَهَذِهِ الْخَمْسِ لَا تَوْقِيتَ فِيهَا وَلَا قِصَاصَ بِحَالِ These five injuries above have no fixed compensation and no retribution in any case. So what is binding? حُكُومَ Compensation to be determined. Not fixed compensation, compensation to be determined. What is the difference between al had wa ta'zir? Had is a punishment that is designated, fixed by the law. Ta'zir is disc discretionary punishment. Now ta'zir would not be in our times. You can't leave ta'zir up to every, but like every judge to figure out ta'zir by himself. And some judge will say, well, qatl ta'zir. And then some judge will tell him, you know, you do two hours in community service. Uh, but that, that would not make sense. You will have to give them uh, basically a window. So for this 
you know, crime, and that is the legislatures in Muslim countries that have to figure this out. Uh, you'll have to give him window. Here is the, your window for this. Here is your window for this. And then the judge uses his discretion based on the circumstances and based on the offender and how frequent they commit crimes and all of that stuff to use that window uh, up and down. But anyway, hukuma. Uh, then the five that are coming, they will have a particular day. What are they? ثم المضحة. And المضحة is in particular uh, different from anyone else. Because that's the only one where equal retribution, in the case of what? Intentional uh, assault is prescribed for المضحة only. And what is المضحة? وهي التي وصلت إلى العظم وفيها خمس من الإبل والقصاص إذا كانت عمدا. المضحة which reaches the bone, five camels are due for it or the equal retribution if it was intentional. Why is المضحة different? Because it reaches a certain extent that is measurable, identifiable, discernible. We cut until we get to the bone. That's it. Can you do it the same way? Yes. Cut until you get to the bone. Now, if it is less than that or more than that, I cannot guarantee equity. I cannot guarantee equality uh, between the original wound and the inflicted uh, wound. al ثم الهاشمة وهي التي توضح العظمة وتهشمه وفيها عشر من الإبل. Uh, number seven, al hashima which exposes and crushes the bone and b bone. Ten camels are due for it. al mudaha five camels or equal retribution. al hashima it broke the bone, but it did not move it. It broke it. Now, how could you break the bone and establish equality? Very hard. It's very difficult. How could you break the bone and ensure that the person will not die? Also, you can't figure this out. So the, the, the first victim did not die. You know, otherwise, the, the whole deal would be uh, due. So the f first victim did not die. How do you do this to the offender and make sure that it is very hard? So no re equal retribution here, only the day. ثم المنقلة المنقلة بكسر القافي وتشديدها ثم المنقلة وهي التي توضح وتهشم وتنقل أو وتنقل عظامها وفيها خمسة وفيها خمسة عشرة من الإبل. المنقلة which exposes, crushes, and displaces the bone, 15 camels are due for it. ثم المأمومة وهي التي تصل إلى جلدة الدماغ وفيها ثلث الدية. Called مأمومة because تصل إلى أم الدماغ. جلدة الدماغ is called أم الدماغ. ثم المأمومة. المأمومة which reaches the sheath of the brain, the dura matter, one third uh, uh, the, of the, the full indemnity is due for it. So, uh, I reached the bone. Al-Hashima, uh, I broke the bone but didn't move it. Al-Munaqila, I moved the bones. Uh, so it's displaced fracture. Uh, then if I, re if I go through the bone, reaching the dura matter of the brain, the covering of the brain, that is 33 camels, one third. Now, what is the next one? A damiga, a damiga that reaches the demag, that cuts through the dura mater, cuts through the dura mater. It's very unlikely to live, but if you lived, you know, you're entitled to 33 as well. It's just like the ma'muma. So that's why he even didn't mention it here, because it's just like the ma'muma. Other injuries, he says, في الجائفة ثلث الدية وهي التي تصل إلى الجوف. Okay. So just mentioning something about المضحة. المضحة المضحة You know, so here is this uh, person here. And uh, so if you uh, cut here like a, a mudaha from here to here, a mudaha from here to here, and another mudaha from here to here, two mudahas from here to here. Ha, what's here the day? Hmm? Mudahas, guys. Mudahas five. Per, per mudaha is five. 
What, what, what do you have here? Ten. Ten. So what do you do to pay five? You, you complete the job. You cut this. <laughs> no, but if you get to cut this before this heals, before these heal, you'll actually pay five, not ten. Two separate times. Uh, but then keep in mind that if you, if you do it intentionally, I may ask for equal retribution. Uh, also. So if, 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 you, if you, like you cut like a, wom like a woman's three fingers, like according to the Jumhur, before the heal, if you cut the fourth, you pay 20, not 30. Uh, and that's the sort of before the heal, you, you pay 20 and not 30. But then keep in mind, if you do it intentionally, I get to ask for equal retribution. I can ask for equal retribution. But if you do it from a place where I can't ask for equal retribution, because it is equality cannot be determined, then you'll get to pay less. Now, I, certainly I don't accept this position, and I would not accept it, and don't tell me it's the Mu'tamad, certainly Mu'tamad, not Mu'tamad, certainly I would not take it. Uh, and the idea here is that rigidity and sort of like uh, basically defending the Mu'tamad and accepting the Mu'tamad will make us look like legendary creatures to the world outside, uh, to the Muslims primarily, because that is the, that, that is the whole issue. You know, the, the rest of the Muslims who don't actually listen to us because they think that we are completely irrelevant. And for you, you have your own community of like-minded people, and as long as you are able to enjoy your biryani or kapsa together or go to Starbucks, you think that you have the world because you have enough friends. Gives you, that's the momentum. Any radical group will have a momentum. Like, how is it that some people here, some people here in America can live a completely medieval life? You, all you need is enough social circle. Like, so, and if you don't care about the world and basically the interest of the religion, the interest of the ummah, the, in, the, the, the interest of the humanity and so on, and all you care about is basically uh, enjoying your sort of uh, delusion of orthodoxy and greatness and piety among uh, a group of like-minded friends, all it takes is like you know, a very limited number of people. And you could, with online, the, the virtual world, you could actually, uh, we, we could be talking about a, like a group of 200 people in the world uh, coming together, having a WhatsApp together, like one of those groups on WhatsApp, and basically connecting together on Facebook and they think that they, are, that, that, that they are not for each other. And they could actually radicalize each other. It could be a vicious cycle of radicalization and it could be endless because they have everything they need for support, for confirmation, for acceptance. They have all they need. If you do this, and if, like if you say to people nowadays, he has Sunnah ibn Akhi, like, you know, Rabia, you know, like uh, Sayyid ibn Sayyid said to Rabia, okay, well, uh, yeah, you know, enjoy it. Uh, but uh, that is why, in the, sort of all Muslim countries, you know, the condition that, that, that people are in, in in all of those Muslim countries. Anyway. The Sheikh said, "For the Jaifa, the third day, and he that comes to the Jaifa, if he comes from the other side, he has two Jaifas. For the Jaifa, wound that penetrates into a body cavity, the compensation is one third of the complete indemnity. If it comes out from the other side, it is considered it is considered two Jaifas, two Jaifas. So one Jaifa, Jaifa." Anything that reaches a cavity, a cavity would be jaifa. 
So if it penetrates, what if it penetrates Qada al-Sahaba or Umar, is that, or Abu Bakr, I think. If it penetrates, you know, if it goes from here, comes out from here, that is penetrating two sides of the cavity. Two sides the, from the cavity, then it's two ja'ifas. That is two thirds of the day. That's two thirds of the day. وفي الضلع بعير وفي الترقوتين بعيران وفي وفي الزندين أربعة أبعرة. For breaking a rib, one camel is the due compensation for the two collar bones, two camels for each one, and for breaking the wrists, four camels. That's two wrists. Each wrist has two bones. That is four camels. We said الضلع if it comes if it heals well. That is one camel. If it does not heal well, that is hukuma, compensation. Here, the hukuma could be more than the day. Could be more than one camel. قد برأت فما نقص من قيمته فله بقصته من ذيته إلا أن تكون الجناية على عضو فيه مقدر فلا يجاوز أو فلا يجاوز به أرش المقدر فلا يجاوز به أرش المقدر you know in active voice فلا يجاوز به أرش المقدر uh, that's in the passive voice. مثل أن يشجه دون المضحة فلا يجب أكثر من أرشها أو يجرح أنملة فلا يجب أكثر من ديتها. Aside from the injuries that have fixed compensation and those like them, the compensation will be determined on a case-by-case -case basis. The compensation is determined by assuming that the injured is a slave and his value as a slave before the injury will be determined. Then his value after the complete healing of the injury will be assessed. The depreciation in value as a percentage will be the basis of calculating the data for the injury or the compensation for the injury. The exception to this is when the mutilated organ has a fixed compensation, in which case he, the assessor, should not, should not exceed that. For example, for a head and face injury that is less than a mudiha, less than a mudiha, the compensation cannot be more than that for the mudiha. Likewise, the compensation for injuring a phalanx should not be more than that for cutting it off completely. Uh, of course, it should not be. I want you to keep one thing in mind. All of this is in non-amd. It applies to amd, but in amd, the victim can ask for equal retribution or negotiate whatever they want. So we're talking about mistaken uh, crimes and quasi-intentional crimes. These ones, they have these fixed penalties uh, or fixed compensations. If it is armed, this compensation stands as suggested, a suggested compensation. However, the victim in armed could basically demand equal retribution or $2 billion. If you can collect the $2 billion, OK. Otherwise, I want equal retribution. Your hand cut off, your leg cut off, your eye poked out, uh, and so on. Uh, so th this, is, this is important because this puts things in perspective. And whatever it is that you find the discomfort in, you will really need to appreciate the beauty of their extreme interest in equity and their extreme effort in realizing that equity within their own sort of paradigms and circumstances, worldviews, which are very different. 
And how do we realize the same objectives, keeping the same principles in different times, keeping the same principles? Because that's also important. Because some things are not changeable. And some principle that there are three different levels of abstraction. There are the detailed rulings. And there are the fifth principles. And there is the maqasid, the maqasid. Three different levels, three different levels. Some people want the maqasid without these. That, that will be a problem, because the maqasid alone are too abstract. That will be shared by all systems, all religions, all sort of legal frameworks or ethical frameworks. However, some people uh, are fixated on this level, which creates a huge problem. If you are fixated on the detailed rulings, that changes in social structures uh, will create a huge problem for you. The people who want to realize the maqasid while respecting the principles and making the detailed rulings their basis. The detailed rulings are their basis. We are accepting all of them until proven otherwise. We're working with this. This is the raw material that we're working with. And then if there are changes, then we will have to basically consider these two levels of abstractions to make the needed adjustments at this level of particulars so that the Sharia remains viable. But really, you should be proud of our legal heritage. It is really remarkable. The amount of detail, the amount of effort, the amount of good intentions invested uh, in, in this uh, legal heritage is uh, matchless in any other legal heritage historically. And, and, and just don't look at today's laws and look at the history, the history of you know, development of different laws in different uh, cultural backgrounds and in different nations. You will find this to be really matchless.